It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Conversations with Joan. Conversations with Joan will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life's Conversations with Joan. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Conversations with Joan focuses on topics that are important to your life, from health and wellness to professional development to personal well-being. Change makers join me to share their insights, tips, and strategies so you can thrive and live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. Now, let's start talking. In today's fast-paced world, achieving personal growth and financial success can be challenging. Today's guest, Reverend James Parker, teaches how to develop the mindset, habits, and practices that are necessary to reach our deepest desires. He joins us today to offer a blueprint for abundance and success. Reverend Parker is the Senior Minister and CEO of Unity Chicago. He's the author of the book, The Wealth Spark, Igniting Your Path to Abundance and Success. Welcome, Reverend. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Joan. So, Reverend, when we think about achieving financial success, we may not think about it as having a holistic approach to wealth. Can you explain to us what holistic wealth is? Holistic wealth is at the core of the wealth spark. It's really about enriching every aspect of your life, not just your finances. It's really about integrating financial success with abundance, per, your personal life, your relationships, and whatnot. So it's it's a, a much more fulfilling and gratifying way of experiencing success. Well, you know, and, and the reason I opened with that, I think a lot of people, they think when they want to talk about financial wealth or financial abundance, it just relates to work, 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 and put more hours in at the office, but they're miserable and the relationships suffer. And so is it your contention then that when we are happy and in loving relationships, wealth will follow? That's absolutely the case. In in fact, uh, in the book, I emphasize that one can be very wealthy, but still uh, kind of lagging in their experiences and their happiness. They're, they don't have any joy and, and they lack peace. And, and at the same time, someone can uh, be lacking in wealth, but also have the right attitude and experiences. So it's really about making it a more well-rounded experience for, for everyone. There are so many people, Reverend, that I know that really come from a place of lack. Like they truly believe that things will never happen for them or that there isn't enough wealth to go around. What do you say to someone who lives their life with that mentality? Yeah, it's it's sad that uh, there are those out there who have a lack and limited uh, mentality and and a belief system. And I really discussed that in chapter one of my book in, in, in greater detail. It comes from having a scarcity mindset, in my opinion, someone who just has limiting beliefs, who talks negatively to themselves, who has this negative outlook on life. And and I'd say to someone in that case that they need to change their mindset to a wealth mindset, to something that's more optimistic and allows them to grow and learn. Sure, we have challenges and experiences that uh, don't always go our way, but if we look at it as an opportunity to grow as a a stepping stone to something greater, it can be uh, an experience that is wonderful. Uh, For example, um, a few, several years ago, I uh, was up for this position uh, that I just knew I was perfect for. This position had everything, uh, had everything going for it that I wanted, and I was perfectly uh, ready for it. Yet, uh, when it came time for the interview, things just didn't work out. I, I, I got on the Zoom call, three minutes into the Zoom call, my laptop crashed. Several minutes later, I, I set it up on my cell phone so that I could still uh, experience the Zoom call. Ten minutes into that call, the, the, my, my, the juice went out of my phone. I had no charge. Needless to say, I didn't get the job. But then six months later, I received a call, a friend had recommended me for a a position, 
that turned out to be the perfect position for me. Not only did it allow me to hone the skills I had, but it allowed me to learn and grow more, create partnerships and collaborations, and really brought me brought me to a, a much better space. And I and I can look back now and say it was a blessing. But in the moment, I was concerned that uh, you know things weren't working out for me. I had this "why me" mentality. I, mm-hmm. I was. Uh, actually feeling like a victim. So, yeah, you know, I think someone can just turn it around by allowing themselves to learn from their experiences, to remove themselves from any limiting beliefs, and to become open to a greater experience. Do you think that the problem is that we are so attached to an outcome? So, for example, if you were so stuck on having that one outcome, you know, that's what made you feel like you were a victim. But if you allow a redirection or a blessing, as you're saying, you know, that's when things really do turn around for us. So how do we get rid of that mentality of being so attached to an expectation or an outcome? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. I I think the way that we do that is that we we begin to not only change our our mindset, but that we begin to create uh, better habits, you know, more positive habits. For instance, I I read uh, one of your articles, and it was amazing on expectations, it really spoke to me uh, simply because there are those moments where not only not not only we are experiencing some expectation that's not our real path, but we allow others to insert their expectations into our lives. And this can have a, 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 an enormously negative effect on us. So it's very important that we uh, allow ourselves to just be open and to flow with life and allow our experiences to take us exactly where we should go. The the world spark is really about a universal flow of life, allowing our, our innate prosperity to come forth. Well, I wrote that piece, Reverend, because it, it was a very hard learned lesson for me. You know, I had, like so many of us, we, we write these stories for the way our lives are supposed to turn out. And it's everything that we've learned from childhood on. And so when I found myself at a point in my life where my mother and my father and my sister and brother had died and my marriage ended and I, you know, it it was the end of that fairy tale I had written and I did not know what the future would hold. And so I really had no other choice but to release those expectations of the way things should have been and rewrite a new story. We were talking about redirection. That was what I had to do. And so many of us have to do that in order to heal and move forward. Yes, I, I absolutely agree, and, and it resonate, res, resonates with me uh, on, a, on a very deep level because I also uh, lost my father many years ago, uh, who was the pillar, you know, kind of the foundation of, of my life, and he, he gave me a piece of advice. He said to me, you have everything you need inside of you to make it, and that w- became an affirmation for me. Uh, and throughout my life, I had experienced a divorce as well, kind of the way that, that you did. We just kind of outgrew each other. But then later, things began to turn around as I began to become open to a greater sense of myself. I became more self-aware. I began practicing principles and, and meditating, getting into self-reflection and prayer, and just allowing myself to step out of the waiting room, as you called it in one of your articles, and get into the flow of life, the flow of my good, my my innate wealth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're talking about what needs to be done, but it's really important to say this is not easy. This takes a lot of work and a lot of perseverance, but, boy, is it worth it. I would absolutely agree with it. This is, this is not a get-rich quick scheme. It's It's really about getting into... Uh, yourself, your nature, getting to know yourself, know thyself, as as the Greek said. And so, uh, I, I believe that if we allow ourselves to to really accept the work that's in front of us, to learn from our experiences, to to step over our failures and rejections, and move into a greater aspect of our being, all things will, will be well. And for me, Reverend, you know. When I was in that really dark place, I didn't think there was another way to live. The the revelation to me came is when I realized I have a choice in the matter. I can stay where I am and be stuck in pain, or I can do something different. And once you realize you have that choice, that's when your power comes. Yes, 
it's it's so it's so uh, uh, it's such a it's such a thing where we we get into our problems and we find ourselves stuck there, and and many people have these issues and it's not a bad thing uh, that it's happening because we all experience problems. But someone said to me many years ago to change the idea of problems into projects, and so if I if I if I see it as a problem, then I'm giving the problem power. But if I see it as a project, I'm giving myself the power to rise above it and overcome it. What would you say, you you had mentioned a few things that we can do, but what would you say are some of the best routines we can incorporate that will help us achieve the success we desire? Well, in in the book, I I talk a lot about tips and practical strategies that can be used to uh, to take us into a greater aspect of, of wealth and prosperity. For me, those things kind of outline into, you know, educating ourselves. Stay open to learning in, in all cases. Find a way to um, learn uh, greater things about financial basics even. You know, set smart goals, you know, goals that are specific, that are measured, that are achievable, that are relevant, and that are time-bound. That way you allow yourself to get into it and see the flow happening in front of you. And then I, I would say make informed decisions, you know, allow yourself uh, to to become open to to listening to your inner self, your inner guide, and make decisions that will bring you forward. And then, and then from there, I would say just consistently review things and, and, and be willing to adjust your plans as you move forward. So many people today are really struggling. What do you believe is at the root of that pain? I think at the root uh, of the struggles that we're having is that we're not uh, that we're spending more time um, on our outer reflection, or, or as I say, the external experience. You know, many of us have have lost sight of, of the fact that there is a deeper uh, sense within us. Um, Jesus called it the, the kingdom of God within us, and, and and Buddha said that we must, you know, treat uh, people as we want to be treated. But it really starts from within, and I think that if we start to self-reflect, to allow ourselves to spend a few moments in the quiet and the stillness, allow ourselves to collect our thoughts and to create a soulful experience out of life, the struggles will begin to to ease and move away. I hear a lot about a spiritual awakening, that people are trying to learn about the things you just described. Are you seeing an awakening taking place? I am. I absolutely am, because we are in an evolutionary state, as, as always. And so everything is kind of moving forward, even when things are looking... Uh, like they're not going in the right way. They're absolutely moving in the perfect way. Uh, this is kind of a universal experience. And so I believe we, we have to just continue on the path, just allow ourselves to continue to walk the path. If we, if we, if we do it that way, then there, there's no way that we can live in a place of regret or, or find ourselves wondering what if. Uh, but we just allow ourselves to live in the not yet. And I think also there has to be an element of faith, of, of believing that things will work out, that there's a greater power. What do you think happens to us when we no longer believe that things will turn out the way we want them to? Well, you know, that that's a very good question. And I, I want to say, sure, we lose faith. But, you know, to be honest with you, uh, faith never goes anywhere. It's another one of those traits that is inside of us, um, just like love and peace and, and joy and happiness. Faith is another one of those powers that we can activate at any time. The, the challenge is, is that we become disconnected um, usually because uh, we are not allowing ourselves to spend time in our moments. We're not living in the now. We're either in the past somewhere or we're in the future, and so we're either in doubt or we're in fear. But if we just allow ourselves to be in the now, in the moment, and, and just come forward, you know, seeing that um, there is a greater presence at work in our lives, that that there's a, a higher power or a spiritual presence in the midst of us, we can absolutely work through that. I love the I love the the the, the, the saying 
Now, if you feel like um, if you feel like God is distant, guess who moved? Mm-hmm. You know, the faith never moves away from us. It's us who moves away from faith, but it's always right there. And I think it's so important today, especially. I mean, it's always important, but it really feels particularly important today because we're on the other side of this pandemic, and who knows what will happen next with, you know, a health crisis again. We have wars going on. We have financial insecurity. There's so many external forces that are impacting our lives that it really is important for us to take control of ourselves, to find the inner peace and to do the work. Otherwise, we can so easily become overwhelmed. Yeah, and that's absolutely true. And in fact, that's what prompted me to write The Well Spark. It's it's really about awakening ourselves to a wealth that is within us. You know, you're, you're absolutely right when you say that there's a lot, that there's been a lot going on since the pandemic. And I've noticed even in, in congregations and in, in different uh, situations I've been in, that there are there's a there's a mild sense of depression that's been going on, and, and sadly, many people don't know how to walk out of that depression. So I wrote the book in in in, in thinking that it could help others, that it could, it could serve a greater purpose, and that is to find the right mindset, you know, to create positive habits, to to take action toward your goals, and then to sustain a level of success that's beyond money. Because when you feel good about yourself, then you'll take the steps that are necessary to acquire that wealth. Absolutely, you will. And um, even when you're not feeling good about yourself, you can find a path to feeling good by allowing yourself to come just to to transition or transcend the, the situation and work toward a greater purpose. The book is The Wealth Spark, Igniting Your Path to Abundance and Success. If you would like to learn more about the Reverend and his work, you can visit thewealthsparkbook.com. Reverend Parker, in our final moments, what's the takeaway? What would you like to leave our listeners with? My takeaway in, in, in this case is that there is a power within you, a wealth of power. And, and it's our job to access that power, to activate it. And we do it simply by allowing ourselves to come into a greater flow in every aspect of our lives, not just in our finances, but also in our personal lives, our relationships, our health, and as well as our purpose. So live your purpose today. Allow yourself to move into a space of good, just seeing good happening in your life, and you will attract good to yourself. Reverend, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Joan. Really enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided is the opinion of our guest and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.